As the eldest son of the ruler of Dubai, Prince Rashid had all the wealth and privilege that came with that position. He was a healthy and sporty 33-year-old, and as an heir to the throne, everything was going perfect for him until he was found dead from a heart attack. There are many dark rumors that surround the playboy prince's final years. Did he really kill his father's assistant? Was he taking drugs? And is that the reason of his death? Sit back and let's dive into the mysterious death of Prince Rashid. Early life, one of 30 children, his was a privileged position as the eldest. Known as Sheikh Rashid, he first attended the exclusive Rashid School for Boys in Dubai before being sent to Britain to complete his education. The royal attended Sandhurst Military Academy and graduated in 2002, just three years before Prince Harry studied there. Sheikh Rashid seemed like the perfect royal, handsome, accomplished, and with some impressive sporting achievements to his name. A keen horseman, he took part in many equestrian events, even winning two gold medals in the Asian Games in 2006. The Royal owned prestigious stables, where he trained his horses and his animals, achieved a massive 428 wins. Sheikh Rashid was also a passionate football fan and was a keen supporter of Manchester United. Dark rumors, the young Sheikh was also appointed to president of the UAE Olympic Committee and had a raft of business interests. He was the partner in an investment firm, a bank and property companies. But six years after his graduation from Sandhurst, the Royal was told he would never become Crown Prince of Dubai with his younger brother, Ham Hamdan being given the position. The official reason was the Hamdan was simply better suited to the role than his elder brother, but behind the scenes, dark rumors were starting to swirl. Allegedly a leaked, supposedly confidential memo from the US consulate in Dubai was sent to Washington and claimed Sheikh had been involved in a death. The alleged note, which was leaked by WikiLeaks, said, it is alleged that Rashid killed an assistant in the ruler's office, there be forfeiting his opportunity to be here. By 2010, Sheikh Rashid had receded his position from the Olympic Committee, citing work commitments taking up too much of his time. But as the years went by, he all but disappeared from public view. There have also been claims, which have never been confirmed, that Sheikh Rashid had spent time in rehab because of his drug use the prince's demise. And then, aged 33, he was found dead from a heart attack on September 18, 2015. Dubai observed a three-day official mourning period for the sporty young royal and UAE flags were flown at half-mast throughout the country. His funeral was held the day after his death and his father still rules, with Hamdan next in line for the throne. In this extremely non-permissive environment, Sheikh Rashid must have been a great embarrassment to his conservative father. Sheikh Mohammed has done everything he can to ingratiate himself into Western society. Often he swapped his traditional Arabian garb for the top hat and tails of Royal Ascot, where he swanned among British high society and where horses from his Godolphin stables won many big races. The Sheikh craves Western affirmation and everything that goes with it. The fate of Dubai depends upon it, but he also carries himself with a certain decorum and demands the same of those around him. His status in his homeland depends on that. By all means, his eldest son failed monumentally in that respect. The latest Sheikh Rashid had, in fact, barely been cited publicly since 2008. What caused his heart attack may never be known, but given the snippets of his past which have emerged, a naturally weak ticker seems an unlikely cause of death. In if a recent development that has captured the attention of many, Sheikha Shaikha Thani Al Maktoum, a prominent figure in the Al Maktoum family, has made a significant move from the first Zabil Palace to the main Zabil Palace, historically known as Sheikh Rashid's Palace. This transition is not just a mere change of residence, but symbolizes a deeper connection within the royal family dynamics. The first Zabil Palace, where Sheikha Sheikha initially resided, holds its own charm and historical significance. However, the main Zabil Palace, associated with Sheikh Rashid, is renowned for its grandeur and is central to the family's heritage. This move by Sheikha Sheikha signifies a closer integration into the heart of the family's lineage and traditions. This change in residence has elicited a range of reactions within the Al Maktoum family. Particularly, the sisters of Sheikh Hamdan have expressed mixed feelings about Sheikh Shaikha's return to the main palace. Their reservations, while not explicitly detailed, hint at the complex interplay of relationships and roles within the royal household. On the other hand, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum the patriarch of the family, has shown great interest in this development. His decision to invite Sheikha Shaikha to the main Zabil Palace is indicative of the importance he places on family unity and the traditional values that the palace represents. It underscores his role in fostering familial bonds 
and maintaining the cultural heritage of the Al Maktoum family. Sheikha Shaikha Tani Al Maktoum's move to the main Zabil Palace is more than just a change of address. It is a step that reflects the evolving dynamics and the deep-rooted traditions of one of the most prominent families in the region. A pivotal decision by Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, a figure of immense stature and influence in Dubai, has recently come into the limelight. This decision concerns the family dynamics of the Al Maktoum household, particularly affecting Sheikha Shaikha Thani Al Maktoum and the living arrangements within the Zabil palaces. Sheikh Mohammed, known for his visionary leadership and deep commitment to his family and cultural heritage, extended an invitation to Sheikha Shaikha Thani Al Maktoum to reside in the main Zabil Palace. This palace, historically significant and a symbol of the Al Maktoum family's legacy, is a prestigious residence that has been the center of many important family and state events. Shika Shaika to this illustrious residence is not merely a matter of changing locations, but a profound statement about her place and prominence within the family hierarchy. Sheikh Mohammed's decision reflects his role as a custodian of family traditions and values. The main Zabil Palace, associated with his father, Sheikh Rashid, represents a cornerstone of the family's history and is a space where significant decisions and events concerning the family and the Emirate of Dubai have transpired. By inviting Sheikha Sheikha to this palace, Sheikh Mohammed is not only honoring her position within the family, but also reaffirming the importance of maintaining and nurturing familial bonds and traditions. This move, while personal in nature, also holds public significance. The Al Maktoum family, being a central figure in the UAE, is closely watched, and their actions often hold deeper meanings. Sheikh Mohammed's decision is seen as a blend of respecting the past and embracing the future, illustrating how family and tradition continue to play a crucial role in the governance and social fabric of Dubai. Furthermore, the decision has been met with mixed reactions within the family, especially from Sheikh Hamdan's sisters. Their reservations, though not publicly detailed, add layers to the family dynamics underscoring the complexities and responsibilities that come with being a part of such a prominent household. Sheikh Hamdan, the Crown Prince of Dubai, is known for his dynamic and multifaceted life, balancing his roles as a leader, sports enthusiast, and family man. Recently, amidst the bustling activities of his political and public engagements, Sheikh Hamdan's personal life has taken a turn that speaks volumes about his priorities and commitments. Currently, Sheikh Hamdan is deeply immersed in his political responsibilities. His role in Dubai's governance is pivotal, involving key decision-making and strategic planning. This commitment to his duties is a testament to his dedication to the city's development and prosperity. Sheikh Hamdan's involvement in political matters is not just a role, but a manifestation of his vision for Dubai's future. Parallel to his political career, Sheikh Hamdan is an avid sports enthusiast. His engagement in the annual 30 Day 30 Minutes Dubai Sports Event underscores his commitment to promoting a healthy lifestyle and sports in the city. This event, aimed at encouraging residents to engage in physical activities for 30 minutes a day for 30 days, reflects his passion for sports and his belief in its importance for the well-being of the community. Amidst these demanding roles, Sheikh Hamdan has chosen to reside alone in his palace in Nad al Sheba, a decision that highlights his need for personal space amidst a busy life. This palace, away from the central family residences, provides him with a retreat, a place where he can reflect and rejuvenate away from the public eye. Moreover, Sheikh Hamdan's personal life has seen changes, particularly concerning his family. With his sister, Sheikha, taking care of his children, Sheikh Hamdan has entrusted her with a significant responsibility. This arrangement illustrates his trust in his sister and his approach to balancing his public duties with his responsibilities as a father. In the life of Sheikh Hamdan, the Crown Prince of Dubai, his children hold a special place. His offspring, little Rashid and little Shaikha, embody the continuation of a rich legacy and are a central part of his personal world. However, the current arrangements for their care reflect the complexities and demands of Sheikh Hamdan's position. Sheikh Hamdan, amidst his extensive responsibilities and commitments, has made a thoughtful decision regarding the upbringing of his children. 
Recognizing the importance of a nurturing and stable environment for them, he has entrusted their care to his sister, Sheka. This decision is not just a matter of convenience, but a testament to the strong family bonds and trust within the Al Maktoum family. Sheka, known for her own role in the family and her marriage to a member of the Bahrain royal family, has welcomed Rashid and Shaika into her home with open arms. Despite having four children of her own, Sheikha has embraced her niece and nephew, providing them with the same love and attention as her own kids. This arrangement speaks volumes about her character and the familial values instilled in the Al Maktoum family. Sheikha's role in the children's lives is substantial. She oversees their daily needs, from their meals to their education and emotional well-being. Her dedication to Rashid and Sheikha is apparent and Sheikh Hamdan regards her as an exemplary figure in their upbringing. This situation also underlines the communal nature of child rearing within the family, where responsibilities are shared and the collective welfare of the children is a priority. Currently, Rashid and Sheikha are residing in Sheikha's palace, integrating with her family and experiencing a nurturing environment. Sheikh Hamdan's choice to keep his children with Sheikha and her family at least until his second wife returns to Dubai, demonstrates his deep concern for their well-being and his trust in his sister's maternal capabilities. In the intricate and closely knit family structure of the Al Maktoum dynasty, Sheikha bint Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum plays a pivotal and heartwarming role, particularly in the lives of her brother, Sheikh Hamdan's children. Her role transcends the typical boundaries of an aunt, as she takes on a maternal figure in the upbringing of little Rashid and little Shaika. Shaika, herself a mother of four and a member of the Bahrain royal family through marriage, has graciously accepted the responsibility of caring for her brother's children. This decision reflects not only her deep familial bond, but also her commitment to family values that are held in high esteem in the Al Maktoum family. Her acceptance to nurture these children in her own home alongside her kids is a testament to her generous and caring nature. In her role, Sheikha oversees the holistic well-being of Rashid and Shaika. From their daily routines to their educational and emotional needs, she ensures that they receive the utmost care and affection. Her approach to their upbringing is reportedly filled with love and attention, akin to what she provides to her own children. This nurturing environment is crucial for the children especially considering the absence of their mother and the busy schedule of their father. Sheikh Hamdan's trust in Sheikha's abilities as a caregiver is profound. He considers her not just as a reliable family member, but as an ideal guardian for his children during his times of absence. This trust is indicative of the strong family ties and mutual support that characterizes the Al Maktoum family. Moreover, Sheikha's role goes beyond mere caregiving she is instrumental in instilling values and traditions in Rashid and Shaika. By integrating them into her family, she provides a sense of normalcy and familial warmth, which is essential for their overall development. In the intricate and closely knit family structure of the Al Maktoum dynasty, Sheikha bint Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum plays a pivotal and heartwarming role, particularly in the lives of her brother, Sheikh Hamdan's children. Her role transcends the typical boundaries of an aunt, as she takes on a maternal figure in the upbringing of little Rashid and little Shaika. Shaika, herself a mother of four and a member of the Bahrain royal family through marriage, has graciously accepted the responsibility of caring for her brother's children. This decision reflects not only her deep familial bond, but also her commitment to family values that are held in high esteem in the Al Maktoum family. Her acceptance to nurture these children in her own home alongside her kids is a testament to her generous and caring nature. In her role, Sheikha oversees the holistic well-being of Rashid and Shaika. From their daily routines to their educational and emotional needs, she ensures that they receive the utmost care and affection. Her approach to their upbringing is reportedly filled with love and attention, akin to what she provides to her own children. This nurturing environment is crucial for the children, especially considering the absence of their mother and the busy schedule of their father. Sheikh Hamdan's trust in Sheikha's abilities as a caregiver is profound, 
He considers her not just as a reliable family member, but as an ideal guardian for his children during his times of absence. This trust is indicative of the strong family ties and mutual support that characterizes the Al Maktoum family. Moreover, Sheikah's role goes beyond mere caregiving. She is instrumental in instilling values and traditions in Rashid and Shaika. By integrating them into her family, she provides a sense of normalcy and familial warmth, which is essential for their overall development. The lives of little Rashid and little Shaika, the children of Shayek Hamdan, have taken a nurturing and wholesome turn under the care of Shaika bint Muhammad bin Rashid al Maktoum. In the absence of their mother and with their father's demanding schedule, the children have found a second home with Sheikha, who has graciously stepped into a maternal role for them. Living in Sheikha's palace, Rashid and Sheikha are experiencing a unique upbringing, one that is steeped in love, care, and the rich traditions of the Al Maktoum family. Sheikha, already a mother to four children, integrates Rashid and Sheikha into her family seamlessly, ensuring that they do not feel the absence of their parents. This integration is a beautiful example of the strong family bonds and the collective approach to child rearing prevalent in the Al Maktoum family. Sheikha's dedication to the children's well being is comprehensive. She oversees their education, ensuring that they receive the knowledge and skills necessary for their future roles. Beyond academics, she also pays close attention to their emotional and social development, providing a supportive and nurturing environment. Sheikha's role in their lives goes beyond the duties of caregiving. She is instilling in them the values and traditions of their heritage, an important aspect considering their place in Dubai's royal family. Moreover, Rashid and Sheikha are growing up alongside their cousins, creating a familial atmosphere that is rich in relationships and interactions. This setting allows them to develop strong social skills and familial bonds, which are invaluable in their personal development. In Sheikha's care, the children also participate in various activities and experiences that contribute to their holistic growth. From cultural events to everyday play, they are provided with a balanced and enriching life, crucial for their overall well-being. In essence, under Sheikha's guardianship, Rashid and Shaika are not only receiving the love and care needed in their formative years, but are also being groomed in the traditions and responsibilities that come with being a part of the Al Maktoum family. This period in their lives, under Sheikha's nurturing wing, is shaping them into well-rounded individuals, ready to take on their future roles. How many wives does the Crown Prince of Dubai have? Polygamy in Islamic culture. Polygamy, specifically polygyny, where a man is allowed to have multiple wives, is a practice rooted in Islamic culture and is addressed in Islamic religious texts. It is important to understand this practice within its cultural and religious context. Quranic Basis In Islam, the Quran provides the fundamental guidance on polygamy. The Quran, in Surah An-Nisa 4.3, states that a Muslim man may marry up to four women, but only under the condition that he can treat them all justly and equally. This scripture is often cited as the religious basis for polygamy in Islamic culture. Conditions and Limitations The practice comes with strict conditions. The Quran emphasizes justice and fairness among wives. If a man fears that he cannot deal justly with multiple wives, he is advised to marry only one. The stipulation of equal treatment is crucial and includes financial support, time, and emotional care. Historical Context Historically, polygamy was practiced in many cultures and was not unique to Islam. In the early Islamic era, polygamy was also a way to ensure the welfare of widows and orphans, especially after wars which left many without financial support. Modern Interpretation and Practice The practice of polygamy varies greatly in the modern Muslim world. In some countries, it's relatively common, while in others, it's rare. Factors influencing this variation include local cultural practices, economic conditions, and the laws of the country. Some Islamic nations have additional legal requirements for a man to marry more than one wife, such as obtaining consent from a previous wife or demonstrating financial capability. Legal status in different countries. 
the legality of polygamy varies across Muslim-majority countries. Some, like Saudi Arabia and the UAE, allow it without significant restrictions, whereas others, like Tunisia and Turkey, have banned the practice. There are also countries where it's legally permitted but not widely practiced due to social changes and economic challenges. Social perspectives. Within the Muslim community, there are diverse opinions about polygamy. Some view it as a part of Islamic tradition that is still relevant, while others argue that it was context-specific and not intended as a general rule. There's also a growing debate about women's rights and gender equality in relation to polygamy. Global Muslim Communities In countries where Islam is not the majority religion, Muslim communities must navigate their religious practices with the laws of the land, which often do not permit polygamy. This has led to varied adaptations and interpretations of Islamic teachings on marriage in different cultural contexts. Sheikh Hamdan's Marital Status Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai, is a figure of significant public interest, and his personal life, particularly his marital status, often attracts attention. Here's what is known based on public information. Marriage Announcement Sheikh Hamdan, also popularly known by his poetic pseudonym Faza, was reported to have been married in May 2019. His wedding was a private affair, and the details were not widely publicized. The marriage was part of a larger celebration that also included the weddings of his two brothers. Private Ceremony The wedding ceremony was private and traditional. As per Emirati culture and royal family customs, such events are often kept away from the public eye. The details about the ceremony, including the venue and the specifics of the event, were not extensively shared with the media or the public. Spouse's Identity Sheikh Hamdan married Sheikha Sheikha bint Saeed bin Thani al Maktoum. Little is publicly known about Sheikha Sheikha, as she, like many members of the royal families in the Gulf region, maintains a private life away from media spotlight public appearances, and social media. Sheikh Hamdan is active on social media, particularly on platforms like Instagram, where he shares aspects of his public and adventurous life. However, he is known to keep his personal life, including his marital life, private. He rarely shares information or images related to his family or private affairs. Children. Sheikh Hamdan is known to have children. He announced the birth of his twins, a boy and a girl named Rashid and Sheikha, in May 2021. The announcement was made through his social media, where he shared a picture of the newborn's feet. More recently, in 2023, he announced the birth of another child. Lack of further details. Beyond these facts, there is limited information available to the public about Sheikh Hamdan's marital life. He has not disclosed more details about his family or his wife, adhering to the privacy norms typically observed by members of the Gulf royal families. Public curiosity and speculation. Due to his high profile status and the private nature of his personal life, there is often public curiosity and speculation about Sheikh Hamdan's marital status and family life. However, in the absence of official information, these remain speculative. Royal Privacy. The concept of privacy for members of royal families, including Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Crown Prince of Dubai, is a significant aspect of their public life. Here are key points regarding royal privacy based on public information. Cultural norms and traditions. In many royal families, especially in the Gulf region, there is a strong cultural norm to keep personal and family matters private. This tradition is deeply rooted in respect for personal boundaries and the desire to maintain a distinction between public duties and private life. Media approach to royal families. The media often respects these boundaries, especially in regions where there is a close relationship between the state and the royal family. In the UAE, for instance, the media typically refrains from intruding into the personal lives of the royal family members unless information is officially released public appearances and communication. Members of royal families, including Sheikh Hamdan, often appear in public for official duties, state functions, and charity events. 
While they are visible in these public roles, they usually do not discuss their private lives in these settings. Their communication is often focused on their public roles and responsibilities. Social media presence. Many royals, like Sheikh Hamdan, use social media platforms to connect with the public. However, they generally use these platforms to highlight their work, cultural events, or personal interests, rather than to share intimate details of their private lives. Sheikh Hamdan, for instance, is known for his Instagram posts showcasing his adventurous lifestyle and love for sports and nature. Respect for privacy. There is a general understanding and respect for the privacy of royal families among the public and the press. Intrusive speculation or reporting about their private lives is often viewed as disrespectful or in poor taste. Legal protections. In some countries, there are legal protections in place to safeguard the privacy of royal family members. These can include laws against paparazzi-style photography or reporting on private matters without consent. Global variations. The extent of privacy and how it is maintained varies globally among royal families. In some European monarchies, for example, there is a greater openness about personal lives, whereas in the Gulf monarchies, a higher level of privacy is maintained. Balancing Act. Royals often balance their public and private roles. They participate in public engagements and use their status to promote charitable causes or cultural initiatives while keeping their personal lives, including aspects like marriages and children, away from the public eye.